I'm Pat Duga. In this screencast, we're going to be taking data and creating models with it to include graphical scatter plots to help us make predictions. Let's go ahead and look at some vocabulary terms that are involved here. Bivariate data is data that involves the relationship between two variables. A scatter plot is a graph that represents the data that's collected in a situation. Correlation is the strength of the relationship between the two variables involved. A line of fit is an attempt to draw a, a linear equation through the data such that it fits the data. And then a model or prediction equation is the actual equation for that, that line. Now, it need not be a line, but we're going to be talking about lines today. The regression line is a statistical process that minimizes the distance between the data points and the line itself. And finally, the correlation coefficient is a number between negative 1 and positive 1 that represents the strength of how tight the data fits that linear model, that line of fit. Let's take a look at scatter plots and the concept of correlation. How strong is the data related? So we're looking here at, at three different scatter plots that represent a relationship between two uh, variables. And the blue dots are the points of our data. The closer those points are clustered around the red line of best fit, or line of fit, the stronger the correlation is. And you can see in these, in the first example, there is a pretty strong correlation. The blue dots are relatively close to the red line. If they were all perfectly on the red line, I'd be suspicious of the data, but it would be a perfect correlation of 1, positive 1.0, because the data is sloping positively. That's a positive 1, extremely strong, positive correlation. The second example shows negative correlation. Now you can see the blue dots, the data points, are clustered generally around the line of fit, they are sloping negatively as we go to the right, they are going down. So it is a negative correlation. So the, the value of the correlation coefficient is negative. Now, com as compared to the first one, it's not as strong. So we would call this a weak negative correlation. The third example, it's virtually impossible to find a, a line of best fit to go through this data. There is no correlation between the x and y, the two variables involved. So we would call this no correlation. Now there's a thing called the correlation coefficient is a number between negative 1 and positive 1 that represents the strength and direction of the correlation. If the number is positive 1 or negative 1, we're talking about perfect positive correlation or negative correlation in the case of negative 1. If there is no correlation at all, it's right in the middle at 0. So when we're conducting an experiment, we're looking at data, and we want to see that there's some correlation, we're looking for numbers that are closer to positive 1 or negative 1 to demonstrate the strength of the correlation. Let's look at a situation here involving data and make a scatter plot and align a best fit. So this is a, a table that shows the approximate percentage of students who sent applications to two colleges, not just one, but two, in the year since 1985. We're going to make a scatter plot, we're going to draw a line of fit, and we're going to look at the correlation. Now, most of the time data doesn't present itself this way. This actually has already been adjusted for us years since 1985, 0, 3, 6, 9. So year 0 would be 1985. Okay, Three years later would be 1988. 1985 is the beginning year, the baseline year. Every other year after that is given by that year minus 1985. So the first thing you're going to do is actually create the scatter plot. Time is the independent variable here, so we're going to put time on the horizontal axis. Percent of students that sent applications to two colleges will go on the vertical axis because it is the dependent variable. And notice there is a break here in the data. It skips from 0 to 12 in the vertical axis. So we're going to plot the point 0, 20, start at the origin, move up 20. That's our first data point. The next data point is 3, 18. 
then we're plotting 6 comma 15 and so on 9 comma 15 12 comma 14 and finally 15 comma 13 now the more data points you have the better you're going to be able to make a case for your the strength of your correlation there's two basic methods for this there's kind of a manual method and then there's a more statistically uh, strong method the manual method is what we're going to use and so what we're attempting to do now is find a line that best goes through most of the data points and so clearly this data is sloping downward to the right and um, we're going to try to find a line of best fit okay here's a line that pretty well represents the data and notice that it does pass through two points and the data points are very closely clustered along that line so we would say it is a strong negative correlation negative because as we're moving to the right the data is sloping downward so given that line of best fit let's go ahead and take two of the points to the order pairs that are on that line and use them to write a prediction equation or create a model for this so the two points that were right on the line that we drew were 3 comma 18 and 15 comma 13 and so we go through our process of finding the slope using one of the points putting it in point slope form and then rewriting it in terms of the slope intercept form and if you need help on that please go back to us previous screencast um, where we did examples of that so we're going to find delta y over delta x now delta x is actually time in this so um, it's actually delta y over delta t so but we're going to subtract the the second coordinates in each ordered pair and then divide that by the difference in the first coordinates and so for our points eight uh, three comma 18 and 15 comma 13 we're talking about delta y being 13 minus 18 or negative 5 13 minus 18 and then in the in the denominator we've got delta t the difference in time or years between the two data points and that's 15 minus 3 or 12. so our slope our rate of change is negative 5 percent because that y was in percent per year negative 5 percent over 12 years So we're going to take that information, put it into point slope form. And we can use either of the points, but in this case, it chose to use 3, 18. So we get y minus 18, because the y coordinate is 18, equals negative 5 over 12 times the quantity x minus 3, because x1 is 3. So the next thing we're going to do is add 18 to both sides using the addition property of equality. So we can isolate that y. And that leaves us with y equals negative 5 over 12 times quantity x minus 3 plus 18. Next, we're going to distribute the negative 5 twelfths to both parts of that grouping, which gives us negative 5 twelfths times x plus, because negative times a negative is a positive, uh, negative 5 over 12 times negative 3 is positive 15 over 12. And to get a common denominator, 18 is the same thing as 216 over 12. A lot of 12s here. So we get y equals negative 5 twelfths x plus 231 over 12. Or alternatively, y equals 0.4166x plus 19.25. Now the text actually combines both a fraction and a decimal. All three of these are perfectly acceptable prediction equations. They are models for our situation. We'll go ahead and use the one the text is using though. Negative 5 twelfths x plus 19.25. So the important thing here is making a prediction. If there is a relationship here and there appears to be a fairly strong negative correlation, let's make a prediction. Uh, given this data, what percentage of students will send applications to two colleges in 2010? year 2010 it's 25 years after 1985 so we're going to use our model with x or t being 25. so we're going to substitute into our model negative 5 twelfths x plus 19.25 we're going to put in 25 because again 2010 is 25 years after our study began 
substitute that in for x. Negative 5 twelfths times 25 plus 19.25 gives us 8.83. That's a percent. We would predict using this model that in the year 2010, 8.83% of students would send applications to two colleges. In this screencast, we looked at creating linear models using regressions and scatter plots and, and helping to make predictions.